Now it's time to estimate the probabilities of various events. We can do so by relying on literature as well as asking from experts. Here we are trying to estimate the probability of changes in the hospitalization rate. The column called impact of 1% of increase was read from the literature. The section called differences between PPO and others was obtained by asking experts. We can see that the net impact of various events like occupancy rate of primary hospital, number of patients seen per day, group versus solo practice, and effect of co-payment reduction is estimated to be 1.67% increase in hospitalization rate. Next, we have to estimate the cost of various events. To do so, we reviewed the cases at the employer side and calculated the average cost of the hospitalization and outpatient visits. We also reviewed the cases at the PPO side. At this side, we had to make sure that we had patients that were similar to the employees at, at the employer side. To do so, we adjusted the case mix between the PPO and the employer side by calculating a case mix difference. This case mix difference showed that the P PPO side had 30% sicker patient than the employer side. Now we are ready to estimate the parameters of the decision tree and put it into on the decision tree. On the right-hand corner, we see that the hospitalization cost at the PPO will cost us 4,796. We reduce this by 30% because there are sicker patients at the PPO side than the employer will have. And we also reduce this by an additional 6% discount because that's the discount the PPO is offering to the employer. The discount offered for the clinic visits is 15%, and the cost of clinic visits is 1,085. The discount offered for mental health visit is also 15%, and the cost of mental health visits under the PPO arrangement is 252. In the lower section, we show the calculation of the cost directly read from the experiences of the employees. The hospitalization cost was, was around $7,549. The rate of hospitalization was 0.44. The rate of outpatient visits was 0.81. Notice that under joining the PPO, we have increased these rates. We have now concluded our analysis. There are a number of things that you should remember in conducting an analysis. First, there is a lot of things that make people believe in the analysis more than they should. Most people believe that all options are depicted. This is not a, the case. For example, we are not depicting in our analysis the situation where a person might wait for a better offer typical error is to assume that all consequences are enumerated. This is not the case. For example, we are relying on cost information here, but there are other non-tangible cost, non-cost uh, data that we should have taken into account. For example, for this employer, on their boards, they had several other healthcare organizations serving on the board. Choosing one of them would have consequences at the board level for the organization. If that's the case, we should rely on utilities and not direct cost information. A third way that typically errors are made is to assume that data are correct. This is not always the case. One should conduct sensitivity analysis to see if small differences in estimates will change the conclusions. The take-home lesson is simple. Decision trees can display the key components of a decision and help a decision maker have a visual understanding of the data that they are trying to incorporate. This ends the first section.